Okay, so there should now be a little poll active just to gather people's opinions if uh, they they think there's actually there's a crisis in UK uh, dog rescue. Is that something? One of the things we want to have a, a quick chat about as well. Uh, so the idea is that I'll have a quick chat about that to start with, as that's something I've been doing a bit of research um, research on. And uh, Debbie's here and she's going to give us a, an update of where we are specifically. Um, and then, you know, we can answer a few questions as well. So hopefully that'll be informative and useful for you. Uh, yeah. So let me have a look, see who we've got joined us. Uh, okay, so up to 17. So we can probably get started. Um, we can always uh, recap for anyone who needs to. So for those of you that haven't met me yet, I'm Michael Brooks. Um, so I adopted Wellington, uh, one of the GSD welfare dogs, ooh, maybe two years ago now, I guess. Got to be, yeah. So obviously, um, you know, um, I'm not the most experienced of dog owners at the time, so I kept in touch just so uh, Debbie could answer my questions as I got stuck. And the more and more I found out about kind of, you know, the work that was involved and, um, you know, there were some areas that I thought I could help out, so I kind of got involved. Uh, mostly on the online side of things uh, but one of the things I noticed was um, obviously we were going through lockdown um, and we were starting to see the post lockdown kind of pups and um, you know a little bit later on there was the kind of uh, we're, well we're in, we're in it now the cost of living crisis um, how that was impacting um, you know what we were having to do and how many dogs that were coming in and some new kind of um, uh, there were more dogs that kind of uh, had issues uh, or more issues than you know on average we'd previously encountered um, and you know it seemed obvious that they were the, the, the culprits of the kind of um, crisis quite frankly of how many uh, dogs we were having to deal with um, and that's certainly the case uh, from what I've seen but also I noticed as a relative newcomer that there were kind of obvious things that were kind of uh, related to the industry as a whole or the sector as a whole um, you know from all levels from rescues to people who are getting their dogs um, and I think in combination they would kind of end up uh, no doubt being problems anyway uh, so Les is asking how do I get sound um, your Facebook may have automatically muted the chat uh, sorry the, the, the live stream so just make sure that that's uh, untipped um so yeah um anyway so uh i spent some time just kind of having a look at what i thought was kind of obvious and putting them together and i think i've posted the link to the kind of the end report um a few times now um so you know it ranges from all kinds of things that for example the most obvious thing that struck me was that there was no um ah good close has got sound that's good to hear uh, like national coordination or plan um, because obviously in that uh, probably uh, uh, no I think there's a sort of it uh, so that's good um, so there's no kind of national coordination uh, which tends to mean that I mean look, pretty much all rescues are charities I don't think there's any official as far as I'm aware uh, like government or even council level where they're kind of uh, rescues beyond kind of just taking them off the streets for their limited time that the councils tend to look after them in their pounds um, so obviously that's um, kind of an issue because there's no central place that people who are having problems can kind of get in touch with um, we're not coordinating with each other so we tend to be duplicate, duplicating efforts uh, and it means it's like there's no such things as say a central registrar for people who have abused dogs um, you know, which could obviously be a useful resource or maybe even a central registrar for adopters because uh, for example we might get somebody who wants to take one of our dogs but they're not quite suitable because obviously some of our dogs have got special kind of yes. considerations mm -hmm. um, so you know but you know they might be perfectly suitable to take on another dog or another breed for example so you know having that kind of interconnectivity uh, can kind of help us all uh, just be a little bit more efficient 
Um, so that was kind of one of the general things. And then there's obviously other concerns. Uh, I mean, I do encourage you to read it. And when I post this video, probably tomorrow, um, I'll add the link to it again. Um, but obviously, you know, uh, another example would be, ideally, we never need to take on a dog. I mean, obviously, that's a utopian idea that will never be practical because circumstances, you know, genuine circumstances do happen. Uh, but for example, we're finding and having spoken to other rescues as well, they're seeing the same, um, where they're getting a lot more dogs than previously that don't really need to come to us. There's like, say, temporary circumstances have changed and it just seems to be the go-to factor to just dump them on a rescue. Uh, obviously, there's genuine circumstances and we're, you know, we're always trying to do that. Um, but it's engineering a process where if people are having temporary problems, there's you know some sort of safety net that allows them to keep their dog somewhere. You know, say for example, they've lost their jobs and can't, or there's vets, you know, that kind of thing. There's somewhere they can go that they can try and get help. Um, now, certainly, there's a few organisations that are trying to do that, but again, it's not in a coordinated, uh, in a coordinated way. Um, so yeah, so I've been just trying to assemble ideas and thoughts, uh, and then, <coughs> pardon me, uh, let me just get a little drink of water here. I mean, I, I, I don't know if you, how far you'd agree with all that so yeah, far. Yeah, yeah, totally on board with that so far, yep. Yeah. So obviously, yes, we kind of discussed it internally, and then, um, so late last year, um, I discovered that there was a, an all-party group which I've, I have to say I wasn't previously aware of. And their, their focus is the uh, the welfare of dogs in the UK. So it's not just rescues, it, you know, it's general pets and working dogs. And um, so, you know, they work on things like they were part of uh, the movement to ban electric collars. Um, so I think that was 19, 2017, something like that. It was, you know, fairly recent, too recent to be fair. But, you know, they certainly advocate um, with other MPs uh, to try and get changes in the law and you know to improve the situation for dogs generally. So one of the things I said in the uh, my kind of article is that we shouldn't rely on government to step in and solve all the problems. Um, I think regulating our way out of some of these issues isn't. I don't think it's ideal. Um, I mean, one of, there are some issues like, for example, uh, there's no real regulation for, say, dog walkers, dog trainers. Uh, there's probably not as much effective regulation as we'd like for, say, breeding. Um, I think several people I've talked to have identified overbreeding as certainly one of the causes for the kind of over demand for rescue services. Um, but we don't know then, you know, over regulate ourselves that there's no um kind of uh room for maneuver and you know too many barriers of entry for people coming into the uh industry so we want to make sure that's balanced but on the other hand having that central government and local government support as well does help facilitate things uh, you know they've got resources that we don't have um they could do things that you know us as individuals can't do either um so they actually responded really quickly so within like a week they got back to me and said yep these are very important issues uh, and it's something we've kind of been hearing about as well so um, we'd like to gather everyone together and just you know um, identify what all the issues are uh, because obviously you know I'm one person with one opinion so uh, so they set up a meeting for the end of February uh, which is you know uh, much speedier than I anticipated for mm -hmm. a kind of a government <laughs> no insult to them of course um, and so far the response has been immense uh, I think there's 100 so far representatives for rescues uh, across the country. Um, so they're gonna, we're all going to be gathering together and myself and Debbie will be going to the meeting as well. Um, so obviously we'll have that discussion with them uh, and we'll see what will come with it. Um, but certainly one of the things I'd like to do is especially kind of network with the other rescues. And I think there's a, a ton of things that we can at least get started um, that will help, hopefully help all of us um, so that's the plan. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot to kind of digest and process and, you know, we're going to need help um, from all over 
uh, the industry, you know, people get involved. So, you know, making sure that people are more educated before, um, you know, they take on a pub. Um, this does seem to be to a certain extent, certainly from, you know, from some cases that we've seen that uh, they've taken on the dog without kind of appreciating that it's, you know, it's a very long commitment uh, and not a cheap one sometimes as well. Um, working with insurance companies to try and make sure, especially on the rescue side of things, um, that there is viable options. Um, so obviously some of these are going to be long term discussions and trying to resolve, you know, what the best way forwards. Uh, but certainly getting everyone talking together is, is a good start. Um, so it might be the case that at some stage, hopefully soon, we may be talking to you, you know, talking to all of you and everyone else as well to kind of uh, encourage uh, you to contact your MPs or relevant organisations and kind of um, just get that kind of support to try and push things forward. So, and we'll certainly report back once, you know, we've had the meeting just to say, you know, how it's gone and what, you know, we think is going to happen next and just continue pushing. Because um, ideally, you know, we want to put ourselves out of business. And as I say, that's an kind of impossible end goal. But certainly reducing, you know, from going from, I don't know, what was it? Uh, even just for, after lockdown, it was 70. I think that Christmas 20, we had 30 dogs. Yeah. Christmas 21, we had 70 dogs. Christmas 22 was 120. Yeah, it's just, it's just crazy and unsustainable. And that's not going down. Um, so obviously the cost of living crisis isn't helping with that because it doesn't only mean that people are surrendering their dogs uh, because of circumstances, it also means that it's more difficult for people to agree, you know, the ones that do think it through and think, well, I, I just can't afford it at the moment. Um, so seeing if there's ways to kind of help that um, in the long term, obviously that's a difficult thing. Um, so it's trying to see how that could work. Um, you know, even if it's, you know, um, I don't know, I don't know what the solution is there. Obviously, having money coming into the system to help that is, is one way. Um, and that's another discussion to be had uh, in the sense that pretty much all rescues are right. Uh, in fact, as far as I can tell, all rescues are reliant on um, donations from generous people like yourselves. Uh, and I think that's, you know, that's that's the one great advantage we do have is there's obviously many many dog lovers and even in their own difficult circumstances sometimes you know they help wherever they can whether it's by adoption fostering or uh, donations uh, and even you know it sounds simple and you know um, almost a minor thing but just sharing and liking posts um, so when we do a, like a, a meet the dog ready for adoption post every single share and like means that the post gets more notice uh, and you never know who's going to read that post so it may just get it to the right person and then that means uh, we can let another dog go to their forever home um, you know it's been suggested as well that maybe we can reduce our kind of requirements uh, but you know there's been experience in the past that obviously this isn't a great thing to do um, because really we need to make sure the dogs, you know, are going into an environment they can settle and be happy in and obviously make sure that the people adopting them have got the right, you know, uh, set up to be able to help, you know, things yeah. go right. Yeah. Um, so it would be, um, it's not quite the right term, but a false economy uh, to try and just simplify that and just make sure um, you know, because we don't want further tragedy or trauma to happen to dogs and dogs and owners. Um, so, uh, welcome. Uh, so, a few more people have joined. So, uh, welcome to you. Uh, some other things we're going to do. Um, everyone who's attended, we'll do uh, uh, a little draw, um, just as a little thank you for attending. Uh, and I know I've got a few uh, bumper stickers. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pick a few people uh, just randomly from those who have attended and, and get those uh, drawn and sent out next week. Uh, but what we'll also make sure to do is Facebook. We'll hopefully record this automatically. Um, and assuming that it does, I'll get that chopped and tailed and put onto other platforms as well. So people can kind of see, um, you know, 
what we've been talking about. Uh, so I've probably kind of spoken too much. <coughs> As I, you can never speak too much about dogs. No, it's true, it's true. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that we need to kind of hopefully tackle in the future. Uh, but I know there's a lot of motivated people and we'll certainly be calling on, you know, uh, people like yourselves to try and help uh, make things better for everyone. Um, so kind of watch this space really. Um, yeah. So I think at this stage, I will hand over to Debbie uh, and she can kind of give us an update of kind of a kind of almost, a, it's a slightly late one, but a belated, you know, a, a New Year's kind of, you know, this is where we are, State of the Union type thing. Uh, and then he, you know, go from there. So over to Debbie. Thank you. Thank you. Well, obviously everything Michael said there was, you know, totally spot on. Um, and as we said through the, the Michael talking was that, Christmas 20 we had 30 dogs, Christmas 21 we had 70, Christmas 22 120. It's worth, worth bearing in mind that in the same time period 2 million new dogs were added exactly. countrywide. So yeah, that's exactly, it. so <laughs> this is just the tip of the iceberg, it really is. I'm taking, if I said I take 4 to 5 calls a day for people wanting me to take their dog, I don't think, I mean, I'm probably under exaggerating. I'm probably underplaying it. Um, we've got to the point now where we're saying, right, 120 dogs. Each dog cost us approximately a hundred pound a week in kennels. And that's without if they need any veterinary treatment, etc. cetera. Um, so we've had to say, well, look, we need to be sensible here. We've got to say no more dogs. So, which we try and do. And then we get the likes of a dog coming in today. We've said no more dogs. And I'm not saying this is a dog that has come to us before, but we then they're getting dumped now. So if we're not able to help them, the person that's got that dog is not just gonna say, okay, I don't need to rehome it anymore. They're just gonna get desperate. And the next thing we've got a young puppy came in this morning, was found dumped flea ridden, emaciated, obviously we'll give an update on that later. Um, so so what is the answer here? What, if we say no, because we're, we're safeguarding the dogs already in our care, we're letting down these others that get dumped if we then say, well, that dog's dumped there, emaciated, flea covered, we can't take it. Um, as Michael said, without us keep going on about money, if you can help by sharing the post and liking the post, just so we get a wider coverage on... Yeah, on yeah and there's certainly um, uh, one of the things that I've been very keen to push is these, for those of you that do online shopping, uh, unfortunately yeah. Smile have kind of shut their program down uh, with Amazon, but there's still things like easy uh, fundraising, easy fundraising. Uh, give as you live, um, uh, there's some other more specific ones which we'll post about as well um, but if you do online shopping you can sign up to these kind of donation schemes and then whenever you shop say on eBay you know like it's only half a percent uh, but everyone doing it soon mounts but if, up. If, if everyone done yeah. it we're gonna get a, a little bit coming in aren't we? So. You, know, if, you know if we can get you know even if it's you know well Every, it's, it's as they say in the, uh, the TV and every little cat uh, helps so you know the more people that can sign up to things like that um, uh, obviously it's a big help to us and it doesn't cost you uh, uh, anything it's the companies you're shopping from uh, that donate you know to the to the people operating the scheme uh, which then comes straight to us uh, which is obviously fantastic and so the more people that can sign up to that the better uh, anyway <laughs> so yeah as michael says by doing that you're supporting us without it even costing you just liking and sharing our post doesn't cost you and it just might get a dog more notice it might get us more notice which will include you know uh, uh, more followers more supporters what is the answer what's going on um i don't know i think head in the sand comes to mind to me i think we've got people that think you know as far as breeder we have some wonderful breeder support us we really do and and we work with them 
But there's also a hell of a lot of German Shepherd breeders out there that have nothing to do with rescues because they all think, well, their dog doesn't go into rescue. I think you need to look at that. Um, if you look at some of the dogs in our kennels, they are not all backstreet bred dogs. They're not backstreet breeder dogs. One of the kennels we use, I've had chat with the proprietor and he looks at me and says, this looks like a show line dog. And I say, it is. You know, then another one will come in. he go, Deb, this isn't a... And I go, yeah. And he's, and he's flabbergasted. Like, but I thought it was only backstreet breeders. No, it really isn't. So, obviously, we again, whether it be breeders, we not, I'm not digging at breeders, I've got some really good friends that are breeders, but we need to work more together. And as Michael said, we need to work more with other rescues. You know, maybe together we can do a little bit more. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. There's too many dogs being put out there that I think people get to the point where they're worried they're not going to home the dogs or something so on the surface it looks good and they home the dog now again we 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 never know 100 percent people come to us and and i'm sure we have been sort of led down the garden path at certain times that like with people wanting to adopt dogs and afterwards you think god i didn't see that coming you know that has happened and, and one instance was we went and collected a dog within days because it was like a Jekyll and I turn out, like perfectly good all through the, the visits and everything. Got the dog, then decided that they wasn't going to play ball. Well, think again because that is our dog and we need to make sure that our dogs are in the right home. Um, and again, potentially that's where, I mean, even if we only go on, say, convictions, um, you know, having some sort of repository of yeah, yeah. Um, kind of people who shouldn't have dogs. And again, that's where the law can come into it a little bit more. Um, you know, certainly having some way of hopefully screening people better than we can do as kind of individual agencies. Yeah. Um, and that, as you have said many times, Michael, if we're working with rescues, surely it helps us to share that information. Yep. You know, and you know, like, well, look, this person come to me and we didn't let him have a dog because, you know, um, again, that was something I, I encountered. Someone came to me for a dog and it wasn't good. It wasn't right. So he then went somewhere else and I did tell him that I, I weren't happy with the setup and effect. And they went, oh, they've said this, they've said that. They took the dog. Within a day, the dog was back to them. So, you know, if, if we could work together more and, you know, so we can just flag each other up, you know, if we know there's someone out there wanting a dog that you have found a reason why they shouldn't have a dog. Um, one of the main reasons for rescue, I think, and I know people probably get fed up with me keep going on about this, is training methods and the trainers. If you see the dogs or the phone calls that people wanted to come in, like because they've taken, they've had trouble, they've taken advice from um, a so-called trainer, behaviorist, and then as they're telling me what the trainer has told them to do, like I can more or less finish the story for them. You know, we get. I think it's still on our website. We say on our website, we only use positive reinforcement training. And we got slated for that by a well-known breeder. So that was absolutely ridiculous. You can't train a German Shepherd like that, etc. And he was pulling all other breeders into the conversation. And, you know, from experience, we're, see we're seeing it firsthand. What I will say is this so-called trainer that done this someone i know went to him from a park so you're talking of a nine week old puppy when the person went there that jumped up and he scruffed it by the neck pushed it to the floor and said this is how you stop it jumping up by holding it to the floor showing him who's boss and um, I, I think again there's um that's another aspect is kind of education oh uh, yes exactly um, mm. you know um animal behavior Obviously, research is ongoing in the same way that it is for human behaviour. 
Um, so new things are being learned all the time about you know what interactions you have with your dog and what impact that can have on their uh, behavior and personality. I think there's more recognition these days that you know any dog owner all should already know that each of their dogs has their own you know they're not stamped out like clones um but it's knowing it's knowing that information um and i think also there's certain education needed um with children i mean not you know it'd be great to be doing some sort of outreach with schools for example mm. uh, just for general um how humans deal with you know the amount of people I know who believe that the best thing to do when they first meet a dog is to walk up to it with your hands in its face, you know, you know, it's this, this, this sort of thing. Um, and, uh, and often that can end in a uh, hike. Um, so it's just having that basic kind of understanding of, you know, how you should behave. Uh, because that's another issue is at the moment, the number of bite attacks yeah. is increasing. Mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, I think that was the last topic uh, the all party group kind of discussed. Um, and obviously, there's many reasons for that. Um, but as I said at the beginning, you know, we're trying to be as careful as possible to make sure that, you know, the, the dogs are safe, uh, but also the people adopting them are safe. And um, that's why we, we have some of the dogs that they have to stay in permanent uh, care because they're just not safe to be put into a normal household. Uh, and sometimes just for their own safety as well. You know, they might yeah, have a yeah. police order and they, they get, you know, they've got a one strike rule. You know, they would be put down. I mean, I know personally when I first got uh, Wellington and started taking him out a little bit, you know, I'd have people coming up and they go, and I go, like, don't, you know, don't come too close because, you know, he's just not comfortable around uh, people at the moment. Uh, and they go, oh, I know dogs, you know, I say, mm -hmm. well, you don't know this one. Um, yeah. And I don't want anything, you know, I don't want him to react because he's frightened of you all of a sudden. You get a nip or whatever, and uh, then the police get involved, and you know, it's Paul Wellington that's going to pay the price, not you. Um, so, you know, it's, it's that kind of understanding that, you know, dogs are different. Yeah. Uh, and it's not just rescues, to be fair. You've got your highly it's strong. Dogs. Yeah. That's why the dogs that come to us weren't rescues to start with. Some of them are well bred dogs. And they end up with us no. and many of them with temperament issues you know and some of them i know the breeders and i know their lines are sound so we can't say bad breeder but so is it what's happened to them in the home in the home they were in you know um we can't prove that or whatever but if all the other dogs that are bred by that breeder are good temperaments and then no. we're getting the one in here that was like literally a, a bad bite risk you know, there's something gone wrong somewhere, isn't there? Well, you know, like humans, so there's the, the nature versus uh, nurture. Nature, yeah. Um, and I think the truth of the matter is it's a combination of both. Yes. Um, you know, you do get some that have got shorter tempers than others just quite naturally. You know, obviously working with them from a young age kind of minimises that kind of threat. Um, and unfortunately, you know, some breeds like our you know, German Shepherds have a, a, a reputation that probably isn't deserved in the same way that many other because at the end of the day you know any any dog can snap if it's kind of crossed yeah. its threshold of what it wants to put up with so um, it's just making sure that they understand that they're in a safe environment and, you know and kind of bringing them up properly so that they have the tools to deal with in the same way as humans you know you get yeah um your kids that can be uh over excitable shall we say yeah um, and again it's proper upbringing that kind of helps them deal with that or in very you know extreme cases they might even need med medication you know so and that's certainly something that's evolving with dog treatment as well uh, is the pharmacology aspects and yeah. you know how that yeah. can help so you know as i said earlier there's just ongoing research and it's trying to keep up with that research uh, you know for, yeah. for their sake yeah it's just that i think education as in getting across to people i mean we're very fortunate we've got the lovely lisa Hurd working with us and she's taken on one of the ones that really stand out to me at the moment is murphy yeah. murphy's owners become prisoners in their own home because they couldn't go out because he had separation anxiety he would do whatever he had to do if they weren't there they couldn't take him out because he would just freak and you know he react and so they worked a year with the behaviorist and this is where coming to bad behaviors for that year they were paying money they had him working with a stuffed dog um 
And in all honesty, we could have said, well, come on, what are we going to do with this dog? They've obviously tried really hard. They've had a behaviourist. He's had all their professional help. If you watch Lisa's videos now, how Murphy has come on. He's doing amazing. But that just goes to prove what the right training and the right sort of help does for the dogs. Then there's the other thing. When people do start seeing problems in their dogs, they go, I'll get a trainer. If it's a behavioural problem, you need a behaviourist. You do not need a trainer. A trainer will help you get your dog walk nicely, get your dog to sit on cue, etc. If you are seeing any behavioural issues like food guarding or growling, it's a behaviourist you need. So, but unfortunately, people call in a trainer. The trainers are not qualified. They've not got enough um, knowledge. So they, again, they... they they use what they've got and give wrong advice so that the, the problem escalates. Yeah, at best it's a bandage for a problem that will just reoccur later. Yeah, or... yeah. It, even if like it, it gets sort of stuffed away for the time being, it will come out at some time. The other thing I'd like to mention, we were talking about breeders and working with breeders. Um, how those puppies are treated. It used to be that the puppies main socialization was from about eight weeks when they go to their new home research shows us that it's from day naught day naught now so basically day naught from when they go eight weeks they should have been so much done in that time and i know i speak to lots of breeders that say we do this we do that if you actually watch the suzanne clovia webinar on um i'm trying to think what it's called lisa will put it up or something um, about puppies she explains why they need it then and if you follow all that you should be getting a, a bomb proof pup going out to its new home I know we did it with the pups we had in welfare last year we followed the Suzanne Clovia protocol if you like they were introduced to lots of things that every day something new was put in their their room um, different set smells, different sights, different noises, they were taken out, they were meat to be. This was all before they left at eight weeks. So much went into that. And and obviously things can still change when they go to their home and I'm not saying they're gonna be perfect, but Enriched Puppy Protocol by Suzanne Clovia, thanks Lisa. That can really set them up. That can really set them up for life. I mean, I've got the proof here. I've got Dicky. I wasn't planning on another puppy, but I just thought it could help show us how, you know, if we do it right from when they're put. And Dicky had everything going against him. Mum, you couldn't get near. Dad, you couldn't get near. They were both really, really nervous. So that nervousness could have come out. It, you know, if it's genetic, that could have come out in the puppies. Um, Dicky loves everyone, and he's an absolute joy to be around and so I, I i strongly believe yes we we can't do nothing with genetics but as michael said earlier nature and nurture um the nurturing he got he can face the world you know so he's got two dogs two as parents that you can't get near and he's an absolute sweetheart so it does matter so if we start them off with the with the right grounding yeah. you know even if they encounter problems and, and as they go on with their new owners, they might not react as badly as if they've had this ground in. And it really is, I, I really would love every breeder to watch the Enriched Puppy Protocol. It really, I am. And she explains it, she explains it so well why you should do what we're doing. I think associated to that as well is kind of how people um, acquire uh, their puppies in yeah. particular, uh, yeah. and even some grown dogs, you know, uh, a lot of online platforms, for example, ban the selling of an live animals, yeah. uh, Facebook, for example. I know I, I used to have most of my posts banned, just if you include uh, an animal on Marketplace, yeah. uh, they automatically, the AI detects it and assumes that you're trying to sell an animal. Um, uh, so, you know, obviously, you know, as you know, most breeders are, are decent ones, but not all of them are. Um, and even uh, we're seeing a problem these days as well of people um, faking being rescues. Um, so I know somebody who just this week 
um, were basically robbed uh, of their adoption the Sunday, so they didn't even end up with the dog, and they were just kind of, um, you know, defraudulently, um, you know, had the money taken off them. Um, but also, it's having making sure that potential owners know what they should be looking for. Yeah. You know that they're going to the they're seeing the dog with the mum. You know, with both parents ideally. Yeah. Um, the conditions that they're brought up in. Um, you know, just so you've got a better idea of what you get into and whether you know uh, what the risk level is as well. So. But then this comes back to education and us all joining forces because if. Nearly everyone that goes out and buys a German Shepherd puppy knows someone that's got a German Shepherd. Yeah. So, if we can get the information out there, explaining why we do, why we should do what we're doing and everything, you know, the amount of people that go to Backstreet Breeders, they go because they don't know any better. So if we get that out there... Well, they don't necessarily know they, they are They don't even know that there's a back... Exactly. So we... We need to get that out there, but we can only do that with everyone joining, you know, with everyone helping. And and so if we get post, I mean, that's our goal, I think, in the end. Well, not our goal, but one of our goals is to get information out there, the right information. But it's no good just sitting on the welfare page, because unless you're a follower of welfare, you're not going to see it. So we need shepherd owners, <coughs> shepherd breeders, shepherd trainers, anyone involved to get this good information out there and hopefully that will help because if, if there isn't an outlet for these backstreet breeders and for i mean we are, we've got one little four month old well she's not more four months now but she came in at four months about a month ago to my knowledge um i don't know if lisa will sort of fill me in on this one um she's still in a kennel that hardly anyone can get near at a four month old puppy but it was, oh, the dad's the guard dog. Oh, the mum, you can't see the mum because she'll be upset you've taken her baby. And, yeah. you know, like, they believed it. You know, and then what they've got, by four months, this dog isn't letting anyone in the house. And this isn't one that, we took it, but this isn't one that's going, rrr, 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 to the back of the kennel. This is a dog that's going, rrr, rrr, rrr. very nice, but coming forward. You know, it's so... People have got to be aware of this, all of these stories, and, that, and we can only do that if we all work together, if all the rescues share the information, if all the breeders share the information, if all dog owners share the information. If we work together, it's the only way we're going to get the education bit out there. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things we wanted to do as well was to see if anyone um, has any questions. Uh, I'd just like to just say a quick thing. on the, Obviously, in this call, we've been kind of looking at uh the challenges you know we're facing and everyone's facing um but i would like to point out that obviously you know there's tons of people like yourselves who are really kind of helping us um you know keep doing to keep doing the work we are doing uh there's a lot of people you know you look at the number of rescues across the country that are volunteering their time and really um kind of uh helping that way uh, you know you guys are always very generous um, we've been doing this 100 Days with 100 Dogs series and we've seen, you know, some decent response to that, um, you know, with a, a steady trickle of dogs going to new homes. Um, so it's not purely a, a bleak <laughs> picture looking forward. Uh, obviously, there's challenges that we need to face and like to solve just to make things better for everyone. Um, so certainly a big thank you to, you know, yourselves. Yeah, we couldn't do it without you, honestly. Um, I know we say that continuously, but it's the truth. We really couldn't do it without it, you. It's certainly, uh, can the cost of be larger? They're already too big to put in normal envelopes, which means they cost twice as much to post. Um, and I really don't want to fold them, but if there's enough demand for it. Uh, so merchandise is an interesting thing in the store. Uh, there's a lot of things we can do. Uh, and obviously, you know, if the, it, the question is having enough de demand for it. Um, so, you know, certainly if uh, a load of you kind of just create a thread and just, you know, have, you know, as many people as possible post into it, uh, we can look at how many people are interested because uh, we really don't want to make, we, we do have a lot of like uh, old stock for stuff that we've done. Now, obviously things like stickers, uh, they store very, very easily. Uh, but larger items, uh, less so. Um, one of the things we do would like to see is more doing more that are uh, useful for your dogs yourselves. 
Um, and you know, obviously we're looking into various options for that. Uh, we've got some more. We're working with a lady uh, who we kind of hooked up with just before Christmas. Um, unfortunately, with the post office strike, that kind of impacted how well things went. Um, but certainly, um, she's got a range of stuff that way you can have more personalised things for you, related to your dogs. Um, so we want to make sure that we're making, um, so that we're making um, uh, sensible decisions of what we're getting. But yes, if there's something you'd like us to see us doing, then please uh, shout out. Yeah, and that's asking, are we taking more dogs because other rescues are saying no? Yes. Yeah, nearly everyone that calls me. I, I suggest another rescue or one of the big rescues and their answer is they've been to them they say no many of the and I, this sounds like sour grapes and I'm digging it of it but the big rescues with, that can advertise on TV and that turn so many away they really do and so yes. again we're back to that if we say no like do we see them dumped or whatever yeah we as I said I've been speaking to other rescues uh, and they kind of especially for the specialized uh, rescues uh, you know for breeds like us like with the German Shepherds um, they see exactly the same thing uh, and sometimes uh, if it's considered like a dangerous dog some uh, rescues just won't touch them uh, so uh, yeah unfortunately it is the case uh, and to be fair, some of the rescues uh, were probably were one of the certainly one of the old older established rescues. So we, you know, we've got fairly uh, well, uh, sorry, uh, you know, working procedures. Uh, and also, you know, the way that we operate is quite flexible. Um, so that means that we have kind of been able to keep ticking over and actually been able to do things probably better than some of the others are. Uh, but certainly I think that's uh, where if we coordinate, coordinated more, we might be able to help more dogs uh, overall. Um, or at least make that process a bit more streamlined um, so that, you know, uh, makes things a bit easier. Uh, so Wendy is asking, have you considered doing a dog show with your dogs? Yes. Um, so we've had a few over the years. Obviously, uh, the lockdown kind of impacted that. Um, uh, but the, I, I guess the, 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 this is where we need help from people like yourselves uh, because obviously we're busy just trying to look after the dogs that we have so don't have quite the bandwidth I mean there's a lot of fundraising stuff for example I'd like to um, so kind of look into sort of more longer term corporate type stuff um, but that obviously requires time um, we're all volunteers so you know pretty much all of us have full time jobs uh, in Debbie's case, she's looking after a load of the dogs anyway. Um, so it's just, uh, if people want to help in that front, uh, then definitely, uh, yeah, we're happy to support in any way we can. Uh, and obviously the more fundraising that people can do, and, and oh, not just fundraising, but awareness raising as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if we're local enough, then obviously, you know, we'll try and kind of pop by type of thing. But yes, uh, Yes, we'd love to see more of that type of thing because, you know, they're fun events in themselves as well. Yeah. Yeah, we used to, I think, just before lockdown, we done it, well, right up until lockdown. And then obviously, because of lockdown, we couldn't do it. Yeah. By the time lockdown was over and the bit after it, we had too many dogs to, to look after. So it's getting the time to go out and do it. Yeah, because it'd be great to do, you know, even oh, if yeah, it's just an yeah. annual thing where yeah, we just have kind of a, a local get together. Yeah. And that's something obviously, you know, we've tried to look into it a few times, but we're just not in the position to do so at the moment. Uh, but I'd say someone would uh, uh, love to go into that. So uh, Mark's asking about a weekly lottery. Uh, so, yes, um, a couple of people have mentioned that to us previously. Uh, I, I think in that case, it's having somebody with, with knowledge of how that works. Um, to kind of help that help us with that and I think there's certain there's certainly rules and regulations that we would need to follow um, mm. and I get it's, it's, it's like any of these things it's having people who have got the time to can kind of come on board and help volunteer um, so uh, certainly one of the things that uh, I certainly need help with personally and I'm going to be doing the thing on volunteers soon and I've also been put in touch with a couple of organisations that might be able to help us. Uh, but certainly if I can, I do a lot, spend a lot of my time doing posting on social media um, just to try and help 
build awareness and trying and that's uh, had a good impact on us uh, but to be fair I'm not the most expert person in the world uh, I'm good with the kind of the more back-end stuff I used to do uh, online development that kind of thing um, so having people that are better at community management and kind of interacting uh, with you guys more and kind of organizing events and you know just having a, uh, hopefully an army of people that can kind of help us uh, kind of bring all this stuff together would just have immense benefit yeah. Um, so yeah, so if anyone wants to get involved, uh, then that would be awesome. Uh, just uh, get in touch. Because I think that's just a yes, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Angelina see. Walsh is asking if we ever take rescues from abroad when there's no, I think, backup. As a rule, our rule is we don't take rescues from abroad. Um, that might sound harsh. If we've got 120 in our care and we're turning them away already, we're, we're struggling to deal with those that are here. So, so we, we, we try and say no. There, but is, there is a big complication as well with uh, dogs from abroad. It's, it, it's something, again, I've, something I've discussed with other people because they've had to take the same stance. Mm -hmm. uh, but also talking to uh, Mark, uh, I can't remember his surname at the moment. One of the biggest problems we have with dogs being rescued abroad and then being brought to the country is often they're not uh, properly um, registered or accounted for or had all the stuff that you've got because you've got to follow a load of rules to bring dogs yeah. into the country because obviously uh, we take safety public safety very, I mean that's I think that's one of the things governments have consistently done well over the years is kind of kept that uh, well keeping rabies out of the country is the main yeah. thing isn't yeah. it mm. um, and unfortunately a lot of dogs that are brought to the borders don't have any of this work that should have been done in preparation for that uh, so the sad fact is is a lot of those dogs are just taken away uh, yeah. and put down because they're just not safe or yeah. you know and can't be there isn't the funding to be able to go through all the procedures that should have been done by whoever's bringing them in um, and as, as Debbie says we've got to you know we're having in the situation we're having to uh, kind of can we take the dogs that are coming directly to us, you know, in the UK, uh, and you know, really, we're set up for dealing with that. We don't have the funds or the expertise to be dealing with all the additional kind of overheads that are involved with that as well. Mm. Uh, but I mean, certainly, if you look into the long term, as if you know, we can get things sorted over here, then potentially there's more resources to be able to kind of take that expertise uh, abroad. Um, you know, so that we can have a ripple out effect. Yeah. Um, yeah. But at the moment, we're kind of caught between the big place of having too much demand in the UK, and then obviously there's a huge demand because of other circumstances uh, abroad. Um, you know, so we do see these heartrending scenes. Uh, we're seeing them here as well, and you know, uh, that's we it. can't help. Yeah. We can't I mean, help everyone. I'm afraid. We've took several dogs that are if you see them they're in the same condition as the of these photos of the dogs we see abroad but that said that is our policy but we have taken dogs on and then when we've scanned them after for the chip they've back they've come from abroad but that we haven't knowingly taken them from abroad but they have which again tells us there's no rescue backup over here for them um so Elaine, uh, so big thank you to Elaine. That's uh, an awesome thing, and it is uh, a wonderful thing uh, having a legacy for us uh, in the world. Obviously, you know, no one likes to think about what happens when they uh, pass away themselves. Uh, but we have had, you know, in the past we've we've had some generous, uh, and to be honest, that's helping to keep us going at the moment. Yeah. But yeah. Um, you know, that's if that's something you know when you're when you're looking at your will and you can you know kind of help in that direction then you know that's you know that's awesome and you know we can't thank you enough um, have we got any more questions uh, let's have a quick look can't smell uh, Okay. The other thing oh, we have oh. problem with is that when we go on about volunteers, we have loads of people come forward, 
and that takes our time speaking to them arranging things and then it comes to nothing you know so that's a it's a lot of time wasted you know and uh, you know uh, and, uh yeah, to an extent. I mean, that's obviously part of the situation is people yeah. are, want to help and it's going through, you know, where, where, where we need the help. So I think what I'll try and make sure going forward is that we provide more information For so we've we got a better need. understanding yeah. so how people yeah. can help us or, you know, the needs that we have uh, directly so that people have a better understanding of whether they can kind of get involved. Um, so I say, well, I mean, it's like all of these things, it's coming up with the problem from different directions. Yeah. Uh, so yes, we will certainly endeavour. Uh, but as I say, I'm going to put something to get together on that well, as soon as possible, really, because I know I'm desperate for, <laughs> for some help. So I can, I can also look at some more strategic things as well uh, to try and look at, you know, how do we solve some of this issues kind of on, on, on the long run. Uh, so uh, Helen's asking, when you home a dog, do you ask for an adoption fee? Uh, yes, uh, we do. It's uh, basically we scale it uh, with the age of the dog. So the older the dog, uh, the, the lower the fee that we ask. Um, it's something, obviously, um, if we didn't didn't need to do that, uh, then you know, obviously we we could, we could look at that, but. Uh, the truth of the matter is that you know we're dependent on kind of fund, yeah, yeah funds coming from all, all kinds of services, uh, and we don't we certainly don't charge excessive amounts. Uh, like I know some of the more not necessarily rescues but private rehoming yeah. um, kind of uh, well uh, sites and kind of organisations do. Um, Just to put that into perspective, we have our dogs a minimum of one month because we want to assess them to make sure we don't believe in taking a dog in and then homing it out again because we don't know that dog so we've got to get to know that dog so we find out for us to help match it to the right home each dog costs us approximately a hundred pound per week so if we keep it for a month that's 400 quid yeah i think if you're looking at overall we currently spend around 25 grand a month yeah yeah and we don't charge and 400 vets. quid for the dog we don't you know the adoption yeah. fee we don't charge that so by charging we're already out of pocket with that you know so if we charge an adoption fee most of the dogs are here much longer than a month you now we've got for instance i've got thomas here all right he's not got kennel fees because he's with me he's been here a couple of months now he was four months when he come and i thought he'd go flying out you know he's still here we've got two youngsters that we took Bella and her five pups in. They were beautiful little pups. We've still got two in kennels. Again, I thought they would go flying out. That was, I don't know, way before Christmas they'd come in. You know, um, so when you think what they've cost us, you know, so yes, there will be an adoption fee, but it'll be nothing like what it's cost us in kennel fees. So. Okay, so. Uh... We're kind of almost out of time, so if there's any last minute questions, then feel free to fire them up. Um, but also, to be fair, uh, I mean, something we'd like to do probably a little bit more regularly, uh, as you say, that you know, things are obviously tight with time, but um, uh, obviously, and try and as I say at the beginning, we had a few technical issues, so this wasn't quite as set up as I'd have liked to have been, uh, but certainly something that we could look to. Um, kind of do more often if people are interested. Yeah, you know, give yeah. some more, uh, you know, updates on the dogs and you know, answer any questions that people have, or even just hear suggestions. Yeah, uh, yeah. from you guys because uh, you know, obviously we try various things, um, but you guys are the ones who kind of are on the receiving end of it almost. So we ask you if you want to get involved in this or that or whatever, and you know, things that you might be interested in that uh, you know think can you know help us in in various ways. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think basically we will love you and leave you at this stage. And again, a huge thank you for your awesome support. Thank you for everyone that supports us, and thank you for those that have joined us today. It really yep. does help because we we've got to do something. We don't know the answers, but we can't sit back and do nothing. So, no, we've got and to then try. tomorrow I will grab this video. Uh, and post it elsewhere so that those who weren't able to join us 
um, you know, and hopefully if we can make, you know, these things are useful and interesting to you, then, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we'll get more people involved. Uh, and that's amazing. So, right, well, we say bye. Again. Yep. Have Thank a, you all for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, what, re what remains of it. What's left of it, And yep. uh, Yes, thank you very much. Thanks, bye-bye.